Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. My name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. Today's video is inspired by the book The Geek Who Came From The Cold by Leon Kaminsky, Surviving the Post-Soviet Era on a Hollywood Diet. And I know what some of you are thinking right now. Here we go. Once Sergei became a little bit popular, got some subscribers on his channel, now he started pushing products left and right. Well, you are totally correct and you are totally wrong. Yet, it's not the case in this video. It is true, I received a message from Leon maybe about three, six months ago, no, time flies these days, and he asked me about uh, rates, which I don't really have any rates uh, uh, for advertising my channel, and uh, he said he has a book on Amazon he would like to promote. Uh, so we started talking, uh, started exchanging emails, uh, pictures, sharing our uh, stories about life in the Soviet Union, and um, I kind of felt bad for the guy. And let me explain you why. First of all, uh, you should know by now that I was born in 1971. So I was 20, or 20, as we say in America, uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. Leon was born in 1981, I believe. So he was only 10, 9, 10 years old in 1991. So there's a huge difference and totally different experience because I stepped through that uh, smoldering ruins being 20 and I was pretty much ready for change while he was still a kid and he's 10 year old so this whole giant tsunami of western culture propaganda whatever you call it you know we both got hit with it but because he was so young it's completely affected him a totally different way that it affected me. Another huge difference between us is our upbringing. So my parents are both came from out of country, so country bumpkins, somewhat you can say. Uh, so we were like a first generation of city people, while Leon's, he, it's totally different. Uh, this is a Jewish intelligentsia that lived in St. Petersburg or Leningrad at that time since 30s, 40s, so we're talking about totally different uh, group of people that I was raised in or he was raised. So we got Ukrainian with the roots in the village or a uh, Jewish city boy. So he sent me his book, uh, Leon Lives in England, but you know, now with modern technologies, um, it's so easy. You know, his book is on Amazon, so he just uh, sent me one, they printed that book in America and send it to me. I still like paper books and I'm reading it right now. So his book is uh, kind of unusual because it's through the eyes of the kid, but it's another great addition to anybody um, who is interested in books of witness accounts of life in the Soviet Union and after the Soviet Union collapse. But <laughs> it was kind of silly, but you know, we exchanged some photos. He sent me the whole, uh, like a file of his family photos and I saw this one picture and it really broke my heart. So here you go, and this is Leon in the third grade. I mean, he is already a nerd in the third grade. I mean, I went full nerd around seventh, eighth grade. If you watch my channel, you're probably painfully familiar with this picture. <laughs> Oh my goodness, but it's 8th grade, it's not 3rd grade. This is actually my picture when I was in the 3rd grade, um, taken again in the village, with my bleach blonde hair, so I didn't look that bad in the 3rd grade. So if you compare these photos uh, next to each other, I looked badass in the 3rd grade. So I said, we had a great time, I like became almost friends, I was like, you know what, uh, I will talk about your book and it's actually inspired me to make this video about the very first uh, video that I watched on the VCR in my life. So, look at this uh, list, 
this is actually kind of funny. It's on one of my notebooks. I told you many times I was, and still is, quite a nerd. So this is the list of the actual videos. So I went to movies. That was our movies. This is actually what I watched uh, on VCR. And this is the list of very first movies I watched. And the number one is Galuboy Grom, Blue Thunder. The movie Blue Thunder was released in 1983. So it came to the Soviet Union. I believe this list is like from 1987. Um, so 1983, it actually had a pretty decent rating on Rotten Tomatoes, 80%. IMDb give, gave it 6.4 out of 10. And Comrade Sergei gave it 0. So the Soviet is from 0 to 5. And I gave it 0. For the reference, I will uh, go for the other movies on this list. So number two that I watched uh, was Police Academy Part 1, and I give it four, uh, which is five is excellent, four is good, three is satisfactory, and then below that is not satisfactory, so Blue Thunder got zero. Then Predator got only three. I mean, right now, I'd probably I'll change my uh, ratings completely. Next movie I watched was Ninja 3. <laughs> <laughs> two points. Police Academy Part 2, three points. I think Police Academy Part 2 was way worse than first. Um, then Con Conan with Arnold Schwarzenegger, three. Next one, I don't know how to translate it, like Sumas Brod is like a crazy people. There was something uh, with sex related, so I gave it four. And the last one on this list here is a uh, Robocop. Only three points. I said, uh, I probably will change my ratings now, but this is what I give to the first eight videos that I watched in my life. Once again, God bless Google. A quick Google Translate, a quick Google search, and I discovered that Sumas Brode, it was a translation. Uh, the movie is actually called Screwballs, and it's also from 1983. And... I don't remember that at all, but looking at the pictures, it seems like there was a lot of uh, student activities, put it that way, a lot of flash, so I gave it a good grade <laughs> just for that. That's embarrassing. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about serious stuff. Uh, so in 1986, uh, so we're talking about uh, Gorbachev is at power. Uh, so Soviet government issued new regulation and they allowed uh, for people to open up a video salon. So like video saloon, maybe you can translate it like video hall. So you could uh, set up a TV, VCR, um, chairs and charge people to watch videos. So all you had to do in order to become a video salon owner is to get a VCR, of course. And that was a challenge we'll talk about it in a minute. Then, in, of course, TV, color TV, and then you need to find area somewhere you can rent a large room, which sometimes you, you could do it, and then set up chairs, and you're ready to go. Average price to watch the video was one ruble, which is not cheap, uh, but not crazy expensive. In end of the 80s, people still had, I would say, not plenty, but enough money. So picture if you make thirteen hundred dollars a month you pay ten dollars because the average person in soviet union was making 130 rubles and a ticket was one ruble the real challenge was vcr at that time the only soviet made uh, vcr which we call video magnetophone or vidak it was a short word but video magneto so like magnet video magnet and phone player right or sound I was um, called Electronica VM12. It just so happened that our Electronica VCR looked exactly like Panasonic NV2000 model. It had that funky top loader system and it was very, very expensive. Uh, our Electronica was going for 1200 rubles. So that's almost nine monthly salaries for the average Soviet uh, citizen. So you can imagine paying close to $20,000 for VCR. I don't think prices were even that close to that level 
when the very first VCRs came out here in, so in the United States. So while I was researching for this topic, I actually uh, stumbled upon some comment that in the end of 80s, when these uh, video saloons uh, became like a hot business opportunity, uh, some people would sell their apartment in order to purchase VCR, and then will run VCR pretty much close to 24 seven. It will last maybe three or four months because you play it nonstop all day long from early morning to late night. And in about this uh, period of time, three, four months, you'll make enough money to buy two apartments. So that was a good deal. Even the VCRs were so expensive. So Black to the Blue Thunder movie. I think I was just so excited, you know, there was a totally different experience and my expectations were sky high because Blue Thunder was the movie that you weren't allowed to watch in the cinemas. So that was kind of, I couldn't say illegal, but, you know, pretty much the videos that didn't show in the movies, that's the videos you could watch in the video salon. I guess the good analogy would be, you know, after watching perfectly uh, choreographed uh, erotic scenes in the movies and how great they look and how fun it looks and then you try sex for the very first time and he was like well it's not that amazing like they show on tv so i guess that was kind of similar situation with me having expectation for this very first video in my life and it's funny i don't remember much about that movie although usually you know the things that happen to you for the very first time you remember quite vividly for a long time I remember that was about this new advanced military helicopter, but I recall being really mesmerized with the VCR. You know, I remember that moment when they installed the tape and it just went that funky way from the top and closed. And then while watching the movie, I was constantly distracted looking at the digital display and those uh, green digits constantly changing and the humming noise of the tape. I think like the VCR was probably my main focus <laughs> during that movie. So I didn't give any good uh, ratings to the Blue Thunder, but I think it deserved at least three, 3.5. I need to watch it again to just kind of refresh my memories. Another curious details about watching uh, videos in Soviet Union is of course we didn't speak English or Italian or French, so all the movies had to be translated. And I think that was another disappointment. When you watched it in the movie theaters, it will be dubbed professionally in the movie studio. So they will make, you know, like speech will be matching uh, how actors open their mouth. And of course, there'll be professional actors reading uh, the script, uh, female and male. In the cases of these VCR stories, everything will be one guy, translator, uh, translating everything. So that was an audio sample of uh, uh, how the translation sounded. And some translators were better, some were worse, some actually were amazing. Uh, I remember one guy, I guess he was afraid that his voice will be recognized, so he constantly had his nose closed, so all his translations sounded super weird. So yeah, I think that's affected too, because I was spoiled with the quality dubbing done by uh, professional movie uh, studios, and these translators took a time to get used to it. And of course, 99.9% .9 of all the videotapes were pirated copies. Usually there'll be somebody somehow making a copy of other videotape on quite often they'll go in a the movie theater with the video camera and film the brand new movie and then they ship the tape to the Soviet Union to be translated and to be uh, copied all over in thousands of copies and sent all over the country. So that was the worst quality possible is so-called uh, the version movie theater version. That means that somebody recorded it with the video camera and that means that screen will be kind of far away quality of sound will be poor and then sometimes be somebody getting up in the middle of the movie walking to the bathroom so you see this outline of person walking across the worst copy I ever watched was actually home alone i don't remember which one probably the first or the second one so the guy who was filming he didn't watch the movie 
before. So he was chuckling while filming. So that was super annoying because first of all, the camera will be shaking as his hand and because he's right next to the microphone. So it'll be like, <laughs> so watching the movie with the screen copy with the guy chuckling and the camera shaking. That was just horrible. That was a ruble wasted. The funny thing that Leon also kept the list of the movies he watched just like me. Uh, just he didn't have as neat handwriting as I did. And just like me, he had uh, posters all over his bedroom. Uh, I got uh, Terminator, uh, Predator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Then, of course, I had a lot of just American trucks. Uh, he had more Hollywood culture. And later, of course, I had a lot of Sandra, uh, singer, performer from Germany posters. But yeah, his room has all got covered all over just like mine. I hope comrades you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll enjoy this book if you decided to purchase. I strongly recommend it. As I said, I'm still reading it, but I like it quite a bit. It brought a lot of uh, fond memories and I found uh, uh, one mistake and I sent it to him so he changed it and he was complaining like I can't believe my person who checks the book then uh, found that part and I was like, well, you need to leave in the Soviet Union uh, to catch that type of a small mistake. It was a date but I caught it right away. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life and so